Hey guys, Monk for 2 here, of course, and today we're discussing a Paddling Mule game where we just do it. <laughs> you know, as the thumbnail says, we just do it. Um, you know, we've got three DDs per side, you know, not only naturally we'll have one down the left, one down the side, and one down the freaking middle. Sometimes it's a good idea to just go for it, you know? Sometimes you just, you know, strategies and all that come to play, but sometimes you just want to have a little bit of fun. And that's what the game is for anyway, it's for fun. And sometimes you just want some fun. Yeah. I said, did I say fun enough times? Anyway. It's, it's actually a good strategic play for at least to have one destroyer down the middle. And what better destroyer to go down the middle than the Palo Emilio? You know, I mean, it's not a bad DD. It's not necessarily the best DD in the world though. And that's perfectly fine. It's got pretty decent guns. Uh, long reload, but pretty spicy alpha. Uh, you've got six kilometer torps, but you've got three sets of them. You've got ones that they all hit, they hit like a truck, probably harder than anything bar the Shimakaze, or maybe the Yudashi Kagero sort of region, but they are very hard hitting truck, it, it, trucks. They hit like a truck and they're very hard hitting, very deadly torpedoes if you actually get them off. And of course, it's Palomelio, one of the fastest tier, seven, tier sevens, rolling smoke that goes at top speed now. You get your speed boost, and yeah, you know, three sets of uh, torps, and, uh, and we are rebelling as well in the middle, and a pretty respectable health pool for its, uh, for its tier as well, and its class type. So yeah, we're going to push here. We've got Twist and Track, which will help us out quite a lot in this middle push here. <clears throat> we have three DDs, so we've got to figure out which DD we pretend potentially be fighting. This is four sets, two sets of four, which is Akuzuki, which means he's used his reload booster at the start of the game, which I think is really quite good. Um, it's good to use it early on because if you don't use it early on you won't be able to use, use your second charge of it later game because it's good to use your charges and you know early torpedoes are pretty darn devastating when they hit so you never know what could happen there but it'll, so you know potentially Akazuki as you know Tashkent's got three sets of three uh, Shimikaze's got three sets of five and of course Akazuki has one set of four but it can use its booster to make two sets of four so that's being aware of that now we're just going to carefully here hang out a little bit. We don't want to get too ballsy. Just because you haven't seen anything in the middle yet doesn't mean there anything isn't there anything isn't on the sides. You know, uh, middle pushes usually go all wrong because people do it too early. They push all the way to the end and then they get blocked by the enemy team who are still positioning themselves to attack the other flanks and they just say, "Okay, turn their guns and you're dead." So you got to be very careful with middle push. Usually, this sort of position is where you want to stay. And you can stay in the middle. The whole point of the middle push is to bring <clears throat> the enemy team back towards B, fighting you while your team, the remainder of your team, captures A and B and then pinches them. And then they're fighting three fronts and it's just not enough for them to handle. We do get spotted here, but we don't get something spotted back. So maybe it's a guaranteed detection thing because it's a battleship. And we do actually realize, what is that here? It's a Conqueror, okay? It's pretty darn dangerous, but the Conqueror has his guns pointed the other way. So we can actually take our time with this, and we can just go blap, and we can just go blap for just 100% insurance here. We take almost no damage, and boom, he is out of the mix. Fortunately, uh, there's no audio for talking there, and then we can add in that beautiful sound effect where someone, where you just brutalize someone. It's always fun when you hear that, you know. Enemy battleship sunk, boom. You know, <laughs> That's, I do miss it when I when I have when I feature these replays and I don't have, don't include any sound. Bit of a shame, but hey, you know you, you can only do what you can do. Uh, I can't. I don't have the audio software to face out voices and all that. So bit unfortunate. But hey, so we've gone here. The only thing defending their base, their central cap. It's not a base this time. It's a domination mode for two brothers. Is uh, that conquer and he's no more. We took a big grand total of like. 3k damage, which is almost nothing. We're going to have to pop our smoke here, just a little bit too risky to get ourselves shown against the Iowa. Now, we could have rushed him, potentially, but I think we wanted to get that cap and maybe misplay, honestly, for the Palo Emilio. You do want to get your YOLOs in, but at the same time, getting caps are important, and you do have sometimes have to play like a DD in the Palo Emilio. It's a little bit unfortunate sometimes, but you do have to play it. So that is good that we got that. It wouldn't have mattered, honestly. We just would have taken a bit longer to get the cap with the Massa B already in the cap. But hey, we'll do this. And anyway, we use our rolling smoke. We use that to push in a little bit closer. And uh, we'll start pursuing the Iowa. Now, something to note. Um, I've said this before as well. It's very difficult to chase after boats, even if they are slower than you. Because your effective speed is significantly cut down quite significantly. Because let's just say the Iowa's going full speed. He's not, but he probably will be soon. 
say he's going 30 knots, I'm going 40 something, I'm only getting there at 60 knots, you know, I'm literally gaining him like a Colorado is to a, a stationary object or even less, potentially Kansas as well, so you definitely don't feel it. We do get a little bit too close to comfort, but it doesn't matter too much here. We're just going to instantly break detection here and we can maybe fire some tops at maybe the Mogami, whatever he does. We don't have the best range. Stealth torping is pretty difficult in uh, Palomu, especially with the DD nerf of concealment, the, or the biggest consensus, which honestly affected the, the, the DDs with worse concealment and didn't really touch the ones with really good concealment because it doesn't really matter if you're five point. If you're 4.9 or 5, you know, in a, in a destroyer, it doesn't matter though if you're 5.5, 5.6, that's quite important when it comes to trying to stealth torp with torpedoes that only have 6 kilometer range. So yeah, important. Now, Mogami is really giving out count of broadside, I kind of want one to open up on him, but Palomu AP is quite deceptive, you would think it'd be very good because they're 135s, but uh, they're actually not that good, so we do need to be careful about how we open up on this, and again, the Mogami can just simply turn and cause him significant problems. He actually does turn away, which means our plan to AP the guy has gone out the window, unfortunately. So we just have to basically uh, try and get this final cap. Our team are absolutely destroying them in the points and then the capture progress, but game's not over yet. We've still got to, they, they can still pull this back. I mean, it's going to be a rough one, but they can still pull this back. Now, we knew that what happens here is you've got Mogami giving flat broadside almost to uh, Masabi, and he's giving his butt, most likely. So he's got tops ready. He's already fired one set there. <clears throat> so uh, Chucky knows this. Chucky being a pretty good player, you know, she can just uh, fire the tops off. She knows it's coming. She knows the second set's also coming and she's held herself back until that time where she knows there's no more tops coming. So you can just push forward and absolutely brutalize that Mogami who's, oh yeah, it doesn't even matter. Shimikaze dead strikes him with torpedoes. <laughs> but anyway, guys, you, you know, the sonar would have been running. She'd have been running because, you know, Again, it's, it's a weird one, you know, it should have happened, but it just didn't, that's okay. Anyway, now, it uh, looks like Flandre went down, I was still running for the hills. We are trying to get this cap, and then after that, we'll try and pursue the Odin. Now, the Odin does have sonar and to be loose, so we do need to be careful with this man. Uh, obviously, our detection is not very good, so we need to take a while in advantage of this. We do get rolling smoke popping up, so that's really good. But let's see if we can get this cap before anything else happens. So slow down a tad, really get this cap going, and... Uh, We'll start pursuing the Odin soon. Now, he's doing a big turn here, so maybe if I'm a little bit ahead and just popping it there. It says 5.4 kilometers, so we have given ourselves 500 meters of leeway just to get close enough for the torps. So even if you try to maneuver, you've still got a little bit going here. Um, so now, now we pop a rolling smoke here and we do start pursuing the Odin. I wonder if he sees it. He might, he might not. Probably when he's, when if he activates his sonar, we'll have to see. And now he is turning, so it looks like he's noticing it. Now, let's see if he activates his sonar. At this point, it doesn't really matter too much because he is going to die. But the question is, will he take us with him is a bigger is a bigger question here. Now, we're full health. We're pretty... Yeah, we actually bounced most of that. We did some damage to our engine here. We did slow us down, but we can start disengaging here. And it looks like that's all she rolled because, again, he only takes three. And, oddly enough, not a death strike there. I think he was just under half health when he got obliterated. So, yeah. We're going to use a smoke screen here to get some shots on Iowa. Pretty good fire chance for these uh, long, de uh, long de reload guns. But again, you kind of expect that when you have such a long reload guns on destroyers, you have a decent fire chance on them. So we'll just fire what we can. Pretty accurate guns as well. And again, there's one, they're 135s. So there's 100% cruiser caliber guns or getting close to cruiser caliber guns. They do hit very hard. They've got good alpha. And just the reload's really what offsets it. It's a buddy cruiser in terms of gun power. Maybe he'll get sapped in the line. We'll never know. We can only hope. Maybe we'll get improved AP because it certainly needs it. Anyway, still got our speed boost going. We're going a whopping 46 knots and we're pursuing the Iowa and Shimakaze. Now, it looks like um, at least Iowa was on sea cap, I suspect. Yeah. We don't know where the Shimakaze is. There's torpedoes nearby over there, but it doesn't really matter too much because Shimakaze has quite long range duration torpedoes. It really could be anything. Shimikaze is also very fast, probably rivaling our speed. So we gotta watch out. You could be really anywhere. It's three versus two here. This could be anyone's game. We have a 700 massive point lead, which means they need to kill us. And they've got five minutes to do so. So it's 100% doable. Again, the points tick means they have to do it very quickly, but it can be done. We've got a Shimikaze who has taken some licks. A Palo and myself who's also taken a couple licks, but not really that much. 
I've still got really good free yellow potential here. Shimikaze opens up against the Shimikaze and just a pile of Mew as well. It's just not a fight he's going to win. So we fire our widespread torps here. It's just giving him a bit more to think about because honestly our main focus is killing him with guns. So we'll just fire a little bit of the widespread. We're just going to fire one as well. You never know what's going to happen. We turn here. Obviously he's going to try and torp us. We, we don't have the first set here. It looks like our second set. Well, his second set, he's not getting his second set at all. Our first set looks really good, actually, even for our widespread. That looks really close to killing him. We did burn him with a fire, but it looks like our torps would have got him anyway, which is quite nice. Looks like he didn't actually have time to fire the second set. Maybe his engine, maybe his speed tubes were broken at the time, or disabled, you know what I mean? And, uh, yeah, we don't know what the Shimikaze did, so he must have helped out. <clears throat> looks like Iowa is definitely in the A cap here, because he's the only ship left. Shimikaze does actually send the remaining torps on Shimikaze, on our Shimikaze, and that's what happened to those. He actually does get them, unfortunately here, but hey, we'll do what we can. Now, again, the better the better play, honestly, is to capture this area and then pursue the guy, because captures is worth more points, and points mean prizes, and we're doing, we're playing the Pallet Amelia right now to actually earn money, and uh, not just because for the, for the giggles and something else that I can see on YouTube, you know, um really are just generally trying to earn money with tier six uh, tier seven premiums and tier six premiums because uh, if you get a good game in tier seven you learn almost you pretty much earn more and than you would in tier six but we've already discussed this in the podcast honestly you will earn average on average more in tier six so it's only if you get really good games so i'd say if you're a very good player tier seven is probably slightly more beneficial money earning but tier six is just far more consistent if you're not having a good best day and ships you're not having the best you're not playing the best tier 6 is the way and if you just want consistent grind you're not really worried about everything else tier 6 is again the way tier 7 is just if you're feeling a little bit ballsy i guess i would take some shot here again we're pretty presenting a pretty small target it's going to be very difficult for him to death strike us here and uh, we're just going to wait here wait for the opportune moment the torpedoes are loaded he knows what's going to happen it's called the palo yolo milio the palo milio yolo milio yolo yolo milio and there we go we go black him here, that's one set, and there's a second set just for good measure here. We eat one, we eat two, that's another dev strike. That's pick up the high cal, and we get our second dev strike of the match. And that finishes up with a whopping score of 180k, 13 torpedo hits, two dev strikes, 3.3769 base, 69, haha, four kills, and 962,000 credits, 590. So yeah, I just really don't know how people get these million credit games. I, I, that was all the boosters then, all boosters, epic, ship credit, credits, global, even commander booster, everything. So I really don't know how people get these million credit games. Is it only a tier 6? Is it with light cruisers I was talking about? Let me guys know in the comments below, how do you guys earn your credits? What's the best way for you guys? Because getting a nearly 4k game and a tier 7 premium DD really should have got me that million credits, but you know we'll have to see and guys hope you enjoyed uh, again let me know how, how you earned your credits down below because we're going for tier 8 and yeah see you all for next time bye for now